Petrified Man is a wonderfully funny short story written by Mississippi's Eudora Welty in 1937. It was published in 1939, and then in 1975, this Pulitzer Prize winning author read the story for the filmmaker Richard Moore. That film and five others were archived at the National Endowment for the Arts, where they were rediscovered about 30 years later. Now we're delighted to bring this treasure to you. Writers is made possible in part by a generous grant from the William Battle and Sarah Mel Repture Crooks Foundation, celebrating the legacy of Mississippi's Eudora Welty. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Writers. I'm Gene Edwards and we are thrilled to bring you these films featuring Eudora Welty. She's one of the treasures of American letters. Her novels and short stories won nearly every prize for literature which could be won, including the Pulitzer. She kept that award in a box in a closet in this house in Jackson in Mississippi. It's the house her parents built. She moved in as a teenager. She lived the rest of her life here. She wrote in her bedroom upstairs. Although she won her Pulitzer for a novel, The Optimist's Daughter, she was known for her short stories. Honing every element tightly is the challenge and the art of the short fiction author. There's no room for extra characters or words or twists in the plot. Every element counts, and Eudora Welty was always considered among the best of the best. In addition to having her work appear regularly in The New Yorker, she published four collections. A Curtain of Green was her first. When it came out in 1941, it put her on the literary map. Petrified Man, the tale you're about to hear, was one of its many wonderful stories. Ms. Welty's career as a writer really began in 1936 when she published Death of a Traveling Salesman in a small magazine called Manuscript. A year later, she was regularly sending stories to the Southern Review, whose editors were the distinguished Robert Penn Warren and Cleanth Brooks. Eventually, they accepted seven of her stories, but when she sent them Petrified Man, Warren rejected it. In despair, Miss Welty burned her only copy in the stove in her kitchen, and then Warren asked if he could see it again. He was having second thoughts, and so Miss Welty rewrote it completely from memory. Warren accepted the story, and it became one of her most anthologized pieces. When she met Warren for the first time, she confessed to the rewrite and asked if he'd thought that she'd been dishonest. Well, no, he answered. You wrote it, didn't you? As you listen to Miss Welty read this story, listen carefully to her words. Petrified Man is one of her stories told largely with dialect. There may be no other writer with a more accurate ear for the individualities and regional distinctions in the spoken word. Here, in Petrified Man, she uses dialogue not in a belittling manner, but to add dimension and authenticity to her characters, to help them come to life. That's one of the many wonders of Eudora Welty. Listen, imagine Leota and Mrs. Fletcher and the beauty shop. The people in Petrified Man, I think, are town people instead of country people and they're also the kind of person that is women who are bored up just they're frivolous types you know with nothing on their minds leota is a hard-working beauty parlor operator and she's seen and heard everything miss fletcher is very gullible and just it's the treat of her week to go and get a hair wash and hear some mad story, which she doesn't necessarily believe. There's no relationship between these people except the once a week apartment at the beauty parlor, so there's no particular fondness called for, I guess. And uh, neither one of them are very lovable people. <laughs> but they're still having a good time. Basically, they're having a good time with each other. Reach in my purse and get me a cigarette without no powder in it if you can, Miss Fletcher, honey, said Leota to her 10 o'clock shampoo and set customer. I don't like no perfume cigarettes. 
Miss Fletcher gladly reached over to the lavender shelf under the lavender frame mirror, shook a hairnet loose from the clasp of the patent leather bag, and slapped her hand down quickly on a powder puff, which burst out when the purse was opened. Why, look at the peanuts, Leota, said Miss Fletcher in her marveling voice. Honey, them goobers has been in my purse a week if they's been in it a day. Miss Pike bought them peanuts. Who's Miss Pike, asked Miss Fletcher, settling back. 